Hey everybody, uh, we're outside today looking at a old bandsaw that I just picked up yesterday and I'm trying to find a home for this guy here. Um, I've got so many bandsaws right now I'm trying to trying to get somebody interested in a project to uh, to buy this one. Uh, it's made by the John A. White Company out of Dover, New Hampshire and it's all there. Uh, originally it was probably a line shaft machine but there was a motor put on it and the motor is gone it was mounted right there I did not get the motor with it but the table is real clean uh, nobody used it as a workbench or anything no drill holes in it or anything like that which a lot of times you get the rubber tires are in horrible shape they're gonna need to be replaced but other than that it's a clean machine and I've got a lot of machinery deals happening right now at this particular time of year. Uh, I'm still working on this particular um, clean out, buy out, whatever you want to call it. And then I've got another one not far from me and a whole lot of lathes and uh, screw machines and uh, you name it. A lot of old equipment coming in and I'm getting ready to start moving that pretty soon. But um, if anybody is interested in owning an old bandsaw, and likes tinkering with these kind of things. Uh, this is a very nice unit. <coughs> I'm gonna try and uh, get it inside. But um, just before I started moving things, I wanted to give you a preview of it to see if anybody might be interested. Just shoot me a comment if you are. Okay, I'll take you and uh, show you some other things I got. Okay, here's the old military five ton tractor. Uh, I got that over at the shop here. Hope you can see it okay. The sun is pretty bright. And I use this for moving trailers around the yard and stuff. But right now, I got some plates cut out here. Some half inch plates. And I'm building a very large uh, gin pole off the back of this thing. That's the mount for the winch. This is where the gin pole is going to take off. Um, believe it or not, uh, springtime has finally come. And I'm getting back on the sawmill project. And I'm going to use this to set some large cement blocks. Uh, you know, 6,000 pound mafia blocks, they call them. Uh, I've got 50 of those to set. And this is going to be a probably, I don't know, I think, <clears throat> I think uh, the engineer specced out my material for just over 10,000 pounds of lift. I've got some material coming for that today and I'll show it to you. Uh, and then I'll get probably a military 18,000 18, pound 24 volt winch. And I'll show you this as it comes along. But um, easiest way I think to uh, carefully handle blocks and set them nice and get them all perfect. So that's another little project I got going on. Here's a couple of old Barrett brake shoe reliners. Uh, they call them relining and grinding machines. Uh, this is where you ground the shoe to fit the drum. And that one's missing its tooling. This one has a table, still has some brake rivets in it. And this one has some tooling in it. Uh, they, they're pretty, pretty dusty and cruddy, uh, but they'll clean up nice. And uh, uh, just uh, last week or so, two weeks ago or something, I had a need where I could have used one of those guys, but uh, didn't have one. And then there they are. Uh, a couple of them came in. Uh, new old stock FJ fender there. And something you don't find a lot of times is there was an old anvil there. Um, anvils are getting hard to find, and you got to give real money for them when you find them. But. Uh, this one's in pretty nice shape, not too terrible. And I got an old valve grinding machine. And a lot of goodies in there. And that's a nice working unit. So it was a pretty good haul. And um, if anybody is looking for any kind of interesting old machinery, uh, shoot me a comment because, like I said, I have a lot of uh, buyouts to do. Uh, seems like a lot of factories are closing where I am and uh, I just can't let any of that stuff go to the scrapyard so I always uh, 
I always go in there and, uh, and try and strike a deal with these guys. So, anybody looking for anything interesting or any old lathes or there's going to be some turret lathes coming in, like I say, and uh, some uh, presses, uh, a lot of tooling, stuff like that. It's going to start dribbling in here in the next uh, couple months, I imagine, through the summer. A lot of machines are coming in and I don't have space for everything. So, if anybody's looking for anything, please uh, just shoot me a comment. Okay, with the nice weather, we could finally start spreading these millings. These are just uh, road grindings that they grind up. And uh, I had a bunch of them here from last winter, and the whole pile kind of froze up on me. And we haven't talked about this building too much, but uh, this is the next uh, building I'm building here. And I've got some metal roofing on the first section. And this is 33 feet deep by this first section's um, 27 I believe the whole building uh, I've talked about it before it's gonna be 108 feet long um, but this is where I keep the Burma wrecker and we've got this little tractor in here because starting to spread these millings uh, I've got to find a compactor get a compactor in here and, uh, and start really setting this stuff down had to build up the base with some old bricks and stuff um, because it was so deep I'd get all the topsoil out of here but um, framing is done Get some insulation uh, then the metal roofing is on there and just a couple more posts in here one on that end and then maybe put a 10 or 11 foot door over here stick another post in here and then start closing this building in and move on to the next section and I think if the weeds didn't get us too bad this this last fall, there's the um, the base for the forge again. You know we still gotta build that blacksmith forge because the center section is gonna be a blacksmith shop. And I've been cleaning bricks on uh, on good days, so I've got a good pile of bricks there. But still got a ton more to clean, as you can see right there. And hopefully. Uh, if I get some free time, I'll get the uh, uh, the center section done here and start getting the roof done. And um, I'd like to get all the framing done this summer, but you know, just being a one-man show, it's kind of tricky to get everything done. So uh, I'll just keep chipping away as I uh, as I have free time. But uh, right now, I'm going to try and get this completely filled with millings, get everything compacted in, uh, put some plastic down. So the water and moisture doesn't come up through the floor. Uh, put the finished coat of millings on there and then close it in. And I'll have a good place to, uh, to park some vehicles and get them out of the shop. And, uh, you know, you can never have too much um, clean, dry storage. So this is going to be a good storage area. I think I could back a few Jeeps in here. Um, I think I can get three or four <coughs> backed in here and one, one or two longer ones uh, behind the uh, Burma Wrecker one and behind it one on the side of it so um, you know every little bit of storage is critical so that's what's happening and uh, there's some more bricks story of my life cleaning bricks for that forge but um, I like the old bricks and it's, uh, it's better than paying for them but um, that's what's happening and as you can see, there's projects all over the place here. Uh, that tub needs to turn into something. Uh, I've got a fairly complete Bantam trailer there, if anybody's interested in that. There's the old beat-up Wisconsin, completely rusted. Uh, that came from the snowblower Jeep, and it's missing a ton of parts. So, uh, that's why I'm trying to find a Wisconsin engine for the snowblower. But that's the rig that powered it. So, like I say, springtime is here. Starting to get outside and get things done. And uh, that's pretty much going to be it. I will bring you updates on various projects as they happen. And as always, I appreciate you watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video.